Good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening for our Village of Elsup committee meeting. Today is November 9th, 2020, and we're going to call this meeting order at 7.30 p.m. Can we call the roll, please? Yes, Trustee Delzell. Here. Trustee Zielinski. Here. Trustee Juarez. Here. Trustee McLaughlin. Here. Trustee Murphy. Here. Trustee Navis Barza. Here. Mayor Ryan. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, officers' reports, starting with myself. A couple of quick notes. Uh, I did get a message today from um, Eamon McMahon. Uh, Eamon is the uh, Worth Township supervisor. Please keep in mind, um, Worth Township will be hosting another free uh, emergency food distribution this Thursday, uh, November 12th at 2 p.m., until food runs out. Uh, the event is located in our parking lot at 11601 uh, Pulaski, and when, obviously I'm talking about Worth Township's parking lot. And um, I've attended a couple of these to help them pass out food. Typically, um, they'll come out with about 250 boxes of food. You know, you'll have um, dairy products and vegetables. And um, this is actually hosted, obviously, by Worth Township. And, um, provided by uh, Economic Development Strategies uh, Company, Corporation, I apologize. Um, obviously, Maureen Ryan, if you have any questions, she's available at Worth Township at 708-371-2900. So again, if you're available, if you know anybody in need of some food, um, they do have just a drive up process. You pull up, and um, usually the carpenters are out there helping out. And I've done the same thing. With, you just pop the trunk and um, help out the families in need. The other I got today was um, a message from the Chamber of Commerce and also the, uh, announcing their annual food drive. Uh, their dates on this are going to be Wednesday, December 2nd, and Friday, December 4th. Uh, time of both days are going to be from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. This is going to take place at the Elsip Firehouse Number 2, which is located at 11960 South Laramie. Uh, please, please note, due to the Due to COVID, this will be a drop-off event. Please pull your car up to the building and someone will take the food donation from your car. Please call their, the Commerce office if you'd like to make other arrangements to drop off uh, your food donation if, if those times don't work for you, in other words. Chamber of Commerce Christmas Giving Tree. Uh, the Holiday Helpers will be handling the names for families who need some extra Christmas cheer from the Chamber of Commerce office this year. Uh, please call the office at 708-597-2668 to let them know if you would like to participate. Um, also, they will then email the information to a family in need uh, they, uh, to obviously facilitate this um, the giving tree. Uh, names will be available in the first week of November. Further detailed information will be included in that email. And again, they wish everyone the warmest warmest wishes and a very Merry Christmas and that's all I had for the scene keep the uh, next is the clerk's report clerk pretzel thank you mayor Ryan we have the representation of some of the minutes from 2018 that had been presented at committee meetings that had not been voted on based on feedback that we received I've included in the packet the original agendas where they were presented as well as the, the minutes themselves so it's representation of March 12th, 2018, April 9th, 2018, and April 30th of 2018. And then you have new minutes in there from the December 9th, 2019 committee meeting for you to review. And these will be on the agenda next week for approval. And that is all, Mayor Ryan. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have the public forum. Did anyone in the audience wish to address the board this evening? Uh, go ahead, sir. Come on up. We need our microphone. Uh, Trustee Delzow. Could you hand him a microphone, please? Make the, that hands free. There you go. You just got to press that button in, Rick. Hold it. There you go. You got to put that right up to your mouth, sir. Yeah, all right. Uh, my name is Michael Joniak. I live in Ellisip. I'm in a GD program. And I'd like to say that um, with uh, the 
air pollution levels that or the companies, I didn't know where it was coming from. It's on 13101, uh, it's Pulaski Street. And the uh, place is a mini mill, and they're open 24 hours a day. And they don't, ex on their internet, they don't explain how much money they make, but they got between 50 and 200 people working there. And it seems like inside there, they, they paid a little bit well, but they, they don't have really good organizations and they weren't around in there. And they probably wish somebody could tell them like good stuff so, so don't they run around too much. Like, now we'll know what to do, it's a little chaos. Now, the, uh, the, the company, Dark Casting and Even Die Casting, they're on 2400, uh, it's Lombard Street. Yes. And they got the, they do uh, like metal work. The uh, die cast, like they, they melt metal and they die cast. And there's, there's like a fragrance. It's You don't see it, but I can smell it. It's, uh, it smells like a candle wax. And it's, depending on which way the wind blows, you'll know, you could recognize it. And I can even pick it when I'm walking out of my house. I could pick up the scent. Now, depending on which way the wind is blowing, that's how you're going to pick up the, the, the scent and the speed of the wind. Now, the, uh, would we get your permission to call Sierra Club to do for that uh, company a uh, parts per million test, see what it is, see what it's doing to us, and then take that information to here. And now, at Walgreens, I'll, I'll go to Walgreens, in the parking lot, they don't have, but there's a light that's out, like a street light, so that's part of that LSIP township uh, situation. It gets a little bit scary over there because I'm crossing my, with my bike. And cars can't really see me, so I gotta wait till they can actually see me because that's too late now. So it's people going through their cars, having situations, and me crossing the road or on my bike with that street light not being on. And there are some other lights that are smaller that are all out over there. Now, going down to the uh, emissions. Now, people like Walgreens or anywhere in this co uh, community also, they, uh, they have a hard time trying to find the emission testing center, and especially at night. It'd be good to have like a sign in, in, in our area directing everybody to the mission testing center. And I'll do community service to pay for that. Now, I, I'm a person that like, don't have a car or have a car. I think, okay, it's nighttime. I don't know how I can't get to the mission testing center. I'm going to just keep driving my car until it falls apart. And that's not good. So the mission testing center helps get the car like fine tuned and you get on the road. Now, some people think it's because it's nighttime, they can drive their car. And you complete the air, and nobody's going to know because it's dark. And you know, I thought they don't have mufflers; it makes noise. And some people with these catalytic converters. Now, if they take it off because they want to feel tough, or somebody's taking them off because the prices are so high, and people don't even know that their catalytic converter is missing, isn't good. Now, for uh, terms of uh, at nighttime, it gets dark, and sometimes I ride a bike or even in a car. Now, I'm on my bike, so I get lost sometimes. And it would be good to have sign directions telling which north, south, east, and west, with signs visible enough. And then some, like on the street, telling me which way is north, which is south, east, and west. That will help me not getting lost going in circles with other people, wasting gas going around like that. Now, that, that can make us a very uh, great. I'll pay due community service for that. They have signs like that. Now, for, uh, okay, for trucks. Now, some of these trucks are heavy, and some are super heavy, and they're coming off the, from, the, from the trains. And when it comes to from the, off, like on highways, and they come on the railroads, it's, it's messing up the asphalt, and it's causing a lot of damage to the, to the roads. So you have like, a system set up where you can, uh, these truck companies have to pay fines for what their rate is, like, like, like I-Pass, I-Pass for the trucks, because they're the first th that are going to be uh, messing up the streets. And then 18 wheelers, a little less weight. So, but but there there's still some trucks like the Quinn Recycling Company. So it might take some time to think about like how to come up with a system to charge these trucks and the truck the tr uh, the, well, the trucks that come from the trains that are heavy. Well, and let me, let me, I have to catch you, Michael, well, because like yes. I say, I always give you three or four yeah. minutes yeah. to make a point. But yeah. Um, yeah. certainly, we do have truck enforcement in our community. You know, so we do watch for heavy, yeah. overweighted trucks and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, majority of all the main roads are controlled, or at least like yeah. the property yeah. itself is owned by uh, the Illinois Department of Transportation. So a lot of times, unfortunately, yeah. I, I don't have to fund 
uh, the, re the repairs on those kind of streets, but I'll agree with you. The, the heavy trucks really do beat up yeah. our roads. Yeah. I did make a note on here about dark casting and the odor it yeah. may be emitting. Okay. So I'll yeah. speak with the building commissioner uh, this week about that and stuff then, too. And we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll double check and see if there's any yeah. data or anything yeah. like that to, yeah. to obviously, <coughs> um, director, you know, we can discuss about the odors that you're talking about then, too, okay? But uh, and as far as like uh, real quick, we we did you weren't here like a week or so ago, but um, we did I did bring up the um, idling laws. The hard part about that really is we don't have any standing on private property. I mean we can implement that on public property, but not necessarily on private. So somebody's sitting in a parking lot like like you said like at a Walgreens waiting for someone to come out of the store and their engine's running. We don't really have saying that. And every and the laws I did read up on to an engine idling, if it if it was seasonally and, and it's always by discretion you know if the um, you need to use your heat or your air conditioner it's actually allowed you know so they're, they're very vague when it comes to those kind of things but we can only control control the public areas not the private okay but okay. thank you again for speaking with us this evening though too michael because sure. okay. i gotta keep conducting business here then too okay that's right you can just put it down we'll take care of it yeah thank you did anyone else wish to address the board tonight come on up sir Just, just curious. Uh, I know you probably mentioned it before, but I don't, I don't really recall. Do you have an ETA for the 7-Eleven at 127th and Pulaski? Is that going to be coming in soon? Yeah, actually, thank you for asking. Um, the 7-Eleven was d delayed a little bit because of a refrigeration system. I believe R Roger Wright. Are, are they looking for that late December? Is that when that's supposed to be coming in? Yeah, they're shooting before Christmas. Uh, they had hoped to have that, like, as everyone on camera can't hear, because we YouTube all these meetings, but um, so Roger's on, on camera, or on, on mic, but uh, just to reiterate what he said, um, they had hoped to be open even right around now. They're almost done. I, I saw they were bricking up some of the pillars and whatnot. That's why I asked. It looks like it's on the front. Yeah, no, it looks good, but unfortunately, we have a brand new 7-Eleven. Uh, that's being built. At, it's a 4,000 square foot store. It's the largest footprint that 7-Eleven makes at 127th and Pulaski, and uh, everything looks wonderful. They're going to fly in the uh, mobile uh, gasoline flag over there yet too. But um, yeah, unfortunately, they had some sort of a refrigeration system that got slowed down. I'm, I'm assuming because of the COVID. They're waiting on two things: the refrigeration unit and also the pumps themselves. The refrigeration unit and the pumps are behind schedule. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Fennerty, correct? Yes. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, anyone else wish to address the board? Okay, thank you very much. Then we'll move on with our reports. Standing Committee reports, uh, Finance and IT, Trustee McLaughlin. Um, as usual, I will have a list of payroll and accounts payable for approval. And then next, uh, I'd like to welcome back our former finance director who is here to help us tonight uh, talk about the 2020 tax levy. If it had been last week, I could have dressed up as the ghost of finance director's past. <laughs> um, I thought the best place to start, because this is an unusual year, is to start with what's going on this year. So um, I want to uh, thank both uh, Tom and Karen in the finance department for helping me uh, get a few numbers. Um, I, you know, we, when the last budget season began, um, we all of a sudden COVID hit and uh, the appropriation ordinance took longer to pass because we were trying to make heads or tails of what this meant and projections were all over the map. Um, I'm glad to say expenditures were not the problem uh, we had originally thought. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, uh, fire OT actually went down dramatically because at the very early parts when no one knew what COVID-19 was and what it meant and how you could catch it, the number of people who wanted to get into an ambulance dropped dramatically um, nationwide. People uh, were having heart attacks and strokes at home and refusing to call 911 because they didn't want to go to a hospital, which is not necessarily good for their health, 
um, but it does mean that the OT dropped. There was some expenditures, but a lot of those, um, the OT really wasn't there. And to the extent that it was, and you could say it was COVID, there was a public assistance grant to reimburse. And there was also, that grant also helped some other reimbursements for some PPE and other stuff. Uh, so the expenditure side really wasn't the issue. The issue was revenues. And again, those were really all over the map. Uh, a lot of people were predicting that sales tax uh, overall revenues could be down more than 20%. And even IML on the state shared revenues early on was predicting some pretty dramatic downturns. And um, some of them have proven out that way. The personal property replacement or corporate personal property replacement tax is down 15% or about $56,000. Um, Obviously, video gaming is down, and uh, I did not know that Tom's schedule is a different schedule, so I don't have the dollar amount for you because he's working earlier than when he worked for me. Um, so, but obviously, if those uh, are not open, um, there's no revenues from those. So in the months that they were closed, obviously, there's no revenues from that. Um, but there's some actually good news, um, or relatively good news, compared to where we thought we were a few months ago. Uh, one of those has to do, uh, I talked with Roger today, and he said receipts from his offices for everything from permits on uh, have actually been marginally up this year, which um, actually corresponds to what he told me sort of middle of the summer. I, I reached out to him, and he was projecting that. And sure enough, they're just marginally up. Um, so people are still doing work around their houses or around their other businesses. Um, the income tax... IML, when I left, uh, the, the estimate out there was that it was going to be down 10.2% oh, 10 to $213,000 this year. Well, they just came out with the October forecast, and they said it's only going to be down 3.1% or $65,000. And so that's more manageable. But the bad news on uh, income tax is we had the highest unemployment since the Great Depression earlier this year. And all of that shows up in next year's income taxes. So businesses' income taxes and personal income taxes, all of that will be hit next year. And uh, frankly, unless the economy rebounds, more than one year. But So the um, IML is predicting that starting in January, there's going to be a 20% drop in uh, L LGDF, the local government distributive fund or income, uh, the village's portion of income taxes. MFT is down 18 percent. Um, it was going to be down considerably more. That sounds bad, but if you recall last year there was a transportation renewal fund which was part of the state uh, capital funding plan. So there's a new set of money that started coming in. I think it was about last November. Um, and so because it wasn't a full year last year, you add that up, which is separated from MFT, but essentially it, it behaves like MFT. You add all of that together, and you're um, almost flat. You're down 1.7%. So that's not that bad. And again, I always, I'm sorry, I, I, we all know, but the, the public watch and, uh, and the uh, MFT is motor fuel tax. Motor fuel tax, this right. Is so this is to replace roads and this is for your like This that, is so. for your roads um, and, and can be used uh, for the salt or for the roads. Uh, the village did not use it for labor costs like some places do. So it really is designed to go towards roads. Uh, motor fuel tax monies, uh, in the past few decades have been flat. So this is still good news with that, that capital bill last year. The big one is really sales tax. So again, that was expected to go down huge, huge amounts. But ALSIP is uh, blessed with a lot of grocery stores, and people need food. So they, in a way, they actually need food at grocery stores more because while they don't go to restaurants, um, they're having to buy that food and eat it at home. So the regular sales tax actually went up just marginally, about uh, 1.3, uh, let's see, it went up 1.3 percent. Um, and the non-home rule, uh, the home rule sales tax, which doesn't uh, include most groceries, went down about the same amount. Mm -hmm. So essentially, uh, sales tax, rather than going down 20 percent or so, is going to be, is flat through the first seven collection months of this year. That's really good. Uh, use tax, which is like a sales tax, but right now it's distributed uh, through per capita on a statewide basis, actually went up a little bit because people were stuck at home with nothing to do, and they started ordering off Amazon and other sites. 
Um, so there's 144,000 on the positive side on there. And then uh, this isn't the general fund, but you guys passed a local gas tax increase of three cents, like all of your other neighboring communities. I'll get back to that uh, in a minute because that money is sort of dedicated uh, to something to help us with a problem. So um, although revenue was expected to be a huge, huge problem, I can't say it's in a perfect shape, but essentially it's not the problem that we were proje projecting it's going to be. And with uh, Pfizer now saying they have a 90% effective uh, uh, vaccine out there, let's cross our fingers that um, things start to open back up and this is something we can look behind us at. So uh, now we go to the capital side. What's happening with the capital? Um, we didn't know where we were going to be. The safe thing, didn't, since we didn't know how bad revenues was, was to defer all capital expenditures for a year. And that's essentially, outside of emergencies, that's essentially what was done in the budget. So we had been saving for a number of years for all of these asphalt projects, and there was uh, four of them, um, uh, five of them actually, uh, three of them in the general fund. So the parking lot that you all parked at um, was supposed to be replaced this year. That was deferred. Uh, two, the asphalt parts of two fire stations was deferred. And then outside of the general fund, a public works garage and a little area over in the uh, water fund area. Um, all were going to be done at the same time this year. We had saved up for it. This was going to be a deficit year of budgeting, but we deferred it. Um, you have the money saved up. You really should do it in the next budget uh, season. You're good. It will mean your budget in the general fund is going to be a deficit budget. It's not a bad thing. I'm here to tell everyone, relax. Just like the water fund this year is spending more money than it takes in, it saved up money to do projects, and that's what you save up for with your capital. So you should be fine on that on the budget. Outside of that, though, you have... Um, some, you have your regular squad cars, you have some other smaller things, but the big thing is in the long term, you have a lot of fire vehicles. And you guys talked about a mini squad, which was a quarter million dollars last year, and you also talked about refurbishing a pumper truck. And then in the next few years, on the capital plan, if you recall, or CAPIT plan, which I misspelled on here, <laughs> I should say capital, um, you actually had a a uh, number of ambulances and a ladder truck and another pumper. You have a lot of pretty big stuff in the next seven to ten years. And it's you, you've started to save up for that, but you're going to need more savings. A ladder truck alone costs $1.2, $1.3 million. So um, I don't believe, I think you're in a position to do that without going back to installment contracts. I'm not a fan of installment contracts. I think that money you pay towards interest should be used toward paying uh, your OPEB or, or other post-employment or retiree health care debt. Um, so uh, uh, hopefully you guys save up and, and uh, pay for that with cash when the time comes. In terms of road and bridge, again, you have an asphalt. All of the asphalt went up in price, uh, the, the amounts on here this year, because that type of labor went up in costs. And uh, Roger's the one who went out and sort of got some bids. Mm -hmm. He did very rough numbers. Um, he wasn't too far off, but they're uh, at the budget time. But now that he's uh, done some asking around, they're a bit higher. And that's all reflected in this. So then some levy-related considerations. Um, the big, big one, and we knew it was coming, and we've talked about it here before, is the police and fire levies went up, what they're supposed to levy this year went up dramatically. Uh, and we expected it. They should go up 3.5% a year for wages, which is the long-term wage increase after you take into consideration steps and longevity and other stuff. Um, but that's all it should go up. Well, you've had a number of things happen. The, um, the actuarial tables that say how long people live or whether they get divorced and all of those, new ones came out, and, and there needed to be an adjustment. People are living longer. Uh, and now they're, they're more towards policemen and firemen. The last one didn't have policemen and firemen as part of the consideration. It was private sector workers, and there was not policemen and firemen. Then the other, uh, um, the other is that there's tier two benefits um, were increased by the state last year before COVID, year, before COVID started happening. And the second, they increased benefits for existing employees. It raises the debt 
that second, and now you have to start paying for that debt. So the second that state of Illinois increased the tier two benefits you're retroactively, you're calling it another unfunded mandate. It's another saying. unfunded mandate. Yes, it is. Um, and so we knew this was coming. Uh, the fire went up 16.8 percent in one year of how much you're supposed to levy for. Police was a little lower than I was expecting. It was 8.2, but combined, it's about 675,000 more dollars you need in your levy than um, you were expecting, and that's during a bad year. It's 2020. I mean, this is as bad a year as anyone can remember, um, and you, you need more money. And so how was that handled? Um, you guys passed the three cents a gallon uh, tax increase on the locally collected tax. Um, I, I thought that was a very astute thing to do. All of your neighboring towns from Oak Lawn to every, everyone passed this thing. Um, and Chicago is about to pass one considerably larger. So there's no town anywhere near you that did not already pass that this year. Um, by doing that and lowering that by that amount in that amount in the um, levy um, for road and bridge by that amount, you now have that same 675000 that will go towards the police and fire levy. So you can now make those uh, pension payments that you are, I can't say required to make, but essentially required because if you don't, you're going to get a credit rating hit. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it saved your bacon, um, but you guys did do a, a uh, vote to do that, and, and uh, I applaud you for, for doing that. Um, there is some good news. Uh, the when you levy, when you have general obligation bonds, the way that the Cook County does it is it will levy a hundred percent for all the bond payments plus an additional five percent because it's so important you never make a bond payment late. It adds a five percent for loss for people who don't do the property taxes. Well, we've had a lot of bonds over the past few decades. And they've rolled forward, and they've been paid off. And that 5% turns out to be a larger amount than was needed. And so what we have is we have two bonds left. We're down to two. And the part that is the general fund's obligation is dwindling. And we now have enough money. I say we. I should now say you. I'm no longer <laughs> part of we. Um, you now have enough money uh, in that that you no longer need to levy for um, for those bonds. You'll still have those bonds for years, but they are obligations of the Road and Bridge Fund, of the Water Fund, of Heritage Fund, and rents and uh, vehicle stickers, and your water rates pay for that. You no longer need to levy taxes for that. So we have to set up a new abatement um, uh, thing for that, but that money can be used to pay these off, the remaining years off, and you no longer have to levy for that, which means that that money can now start to go towards the uh, general fund without any additional increase in taxes for that. Um, and then, uh, so based on that, um, now now where do you have to go? Your, your wages, as I said, actuaries think that over time at 3.5% increase in wages, there's some uh, increase in service labor, um, but inflation's lower than that. So 3% um, increase in your levy should be more than enough um, to cover operations and plug the gap of your uh, the revenues that were a shortfall. And you should be fine if you want to go with maintenance. However, uh, there's another option, which is a 4.99% increase. A 4.99% increase uh, would bring in another $263,000 a year. Uh, that could go to either one of two places. One was the is start saving in the general fund for all these fire vehicles. And again, you actually have some money saved for even that. You just don't have enough for all of those vehicles yet, but you have a number of years to get there. The other thing I did not mention is that, uh, and I think I've mentioned this before, and I, I know I'm not the only one because uh, um, Dan and Mike have also mentioned this before. Their public works garage is bursting at the seams. Mm -hmm. Um, they do not have enough space on there. It's been brought up in the budget before. Um, I think that there's a plan 
believe it or not they could help get us to the point where they could do an expansion of their garage so that's the other place it could go that additional money if you want with four point nine nine could go to either road and bridge for that eventual saving for the expansion of the garage or it could go towards saving for the police vehicles or and I I needed a placeholder I actually split it between the two so if you go to the very last page the first two columns is a three percent which I get said is essentially a maintenance one that covers your your gaps for your funding and and your wage increases and and again I urge you to do all of the asphalt next year and replace I forgot to mention replace my dump truck he has enough money for his dump truck that thing is really falling apart if you haven't seen it go down and see it I'm sure he'll show you all of those things that were deferred this year can be done next year it will be a deficit budget but that's what we anticipated to do this year no big deal we've saved those monies beyond that though you have some bigger capital items and so helping to save for that would be the four point nine nine percent increase and as I said if you look at both the corporate and the road and bridge I split that increase between those two it could go to either one or it could be as it is now split between those two and that would help you in the longer term you have you have deferred a lot and and I shouldn't say you because I and now I will put myself back in there we have deferred a lot of capital over the years because we had some pretty tough budget years and I think we're back to the point of sort of planning to to, um, to get through those because if you defer capital for too long it really does come back to bite you um, so the say you you missed the presentation from the the street guy who wants us to spend what 1.3 million per year and <laughs> on which on the street on streets. Keeping up on, on uh, street replacement well um, I will tell you that the uh, on the positive side even though uh, M the motor fuel tax or MFT tax is down 18 percent that transportation renewal fund will actually make a difference over the long term towards spending money on streets as will um, we were near the very end of our capital plan with regards to the road and bridge fund and the road and bridge fund is not actually done any streets in many many years uh, longer than I've been here um, because it had such huge capital needs you guys had a lot of dump trucks and you had some other large equipment um, you're at the end of that list so now as soon as that dump truck is I think you have one more after this the one right are you down to two left or you want three left you're, you're, you're nearing the very end of this. As soon as that happens, those are pretty big ticket items, and you should be able to put some more money. Uh, the end is in sight, I should say. And you should be able to put some more street uh, money towards the streets from the road and bridge fund itself. So um, the streets are going to get, you know, they get older, they get beat up, but uh, there's some good news on the horizon towards putting more money than we've been able to put in the past towards the streets. And um, the other thing is, both of these uh, I did are under the truth and taxation uh, limit. Um, so we had a, a number of years ago, truth and taxation is a hearing done before the tax levy. It is an optional hearing if you are under 5%. Um, this is yet another, the last two years you've had them that hearing even though it's been under five percent because frankly it's a very good transparency thing it gives the public an opportunity to know where your tax dollars are going and it gives them an opportunity to talk about it to learn about it to ask questions uh, to give input on it so we've had that uh, now for many years and uh, I see no reason why you wouldn't want to continue to have a truth and taxation hearing um, if you would like me to come back and do that hearing uh, I'd be perfectly happy to do that um, and I can come back uh, the other part is I would ask that you guys make some sort of a determination on the levy tonight um, and the reason for that is mm -hmm. you have to pass this before it has to get to the county before the last Tuesday in December 
And if you have a truth and taxation hearing, there is a lot of lead time to be able to both create the posting and to get it in the, the newspaper um, in advance of that hearing so people can know when it's going to happen. So to give uh, some direction tonight uh, would be advisable um, uh, so we could get that truth and taxation hearing, which I recommend, even though both of these numbers do not require it, I recommend you keep that going. Is there any questions? I know that's a lot. So we've, co we've covered uh, the uh, sort of the state of the village uh, halfway through the fiscal year. We covered the capital needs. Um, and we covered a few quirks about the tax levy, including the very large increase in the police and fire pension levy needed. Um, one question I would have, Kent. Um, have you figured out, based on the 3% or the 4.99%, um, what the impact that is on the average homeowner? I mean, uh, I, we talked I, about $2.70. You're right, and I, I apologize. This time around, that was on my list to do. Um, I, I, I did most of this that. today. Okay. I took the day off today and, uh, and spent most of the day on this, and that was sort of the one part I did not get. That will be a part of the uh, truth and taxation uh, hearing. Um, I will tell you what. I have a computer that uh, if you will allow me to break in uh, a few minutes later into the meeting <laughs> between something, I would be happy to calculate that and uh, give that to you. Right. I can calculate that on the fly. I'm just not willing to do it right now. Give me give me five or ten minutes. But I mean, potentially ballpark, we're talking. We're not talking three dollars a month. Yeah, ish. something like that. We're not we're not talking we're not talking even ten dollars a month. I don't believe, but I could be wrong. But, but we're not talking twenty five. I know we're probably talking more in that under five dollar a month uh, uh, range. But I will I will be happy to calculate that and and uh, jump in in the middle as long as you don't make me wait till the very end. <laughs> I still have a garage to clean. That was what was supposed to happen today. Well, Ken, first, thanks for thanks for helping us out with oh, this yeah. discussion Absolutely. this evening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alvin was uh, for everyone watching. Mr. Alvin was with us for six years and recently left us. Uh, we do not have a permanent <laughs> finance director at this time, so Kent, as a professional courtesy, came back to help us out tonight. So thank you very much, Kent. It, uh, it, and for the record, it is a volunteer. There's no, there's no <laughs> I asked him, like, what do you need? Yeah, and thank you, no, Kent. We really appreciate and, and, that. And again, I would be happy if you, if you would like uh, to do the truth and taxation hearing. I'd be happy to come back and do that as well. I, I just need guidance tonight as to know what that levy would be. Well, one thing, you know, I sent Kent over a, a grocery list of things that we deferred. Now, you know, the, the board has done a great job of, uh, as Kent said, being conscious of r revenues. Revenues are down. When, this, when we saw it during COVID, uh, we actually had three budgets that we presented uh, as an appropriation uh, this year where we had um, our fiscal year 21 budget, we had our pre-COVID budget, uh, it was called the mayor's pre-COVID uh, budget, rather, and then we had the mayor's um, disaster budget, which is what we approved. We actually took our estimated revenue of almost $52 million, and we dialed it down. We approved an we approved an appropriation ordinance of like $49.4 million. So, thank you to the board for uh, you know. I thought it was a good idea to not. Um, spend what we may not get, especially when the state of Illinois dialed down their budget almost $267 million. Uh, we should not think that we're getting our money if they're not getting theirs. Uh, so we did reduce our spending by over $2.4 million, but just because we reduced our spending doesn't mean we stop planning. You know, we have to plan moving forward. And all we did was really just defer capital purchases, as Kent just alluded to. Um, I did get news, uh, Trustee Murphy and I, uh, Trustee Murphy is the chairperson for fire. Uh, we were just informed on Friday that um, that last week when I told everybody about a fire truck getting sideswiped by a semi-truck, preliminary review uh, investigation is saying that this might be more than $20,000 worth of damage on this truck. It's just, uh, got a stainless steel frame on it and everything else. And it's a, a 2006 apparatus. So, I mean, I'm, I don't know where it stands at, but that's going to have to be evaluated by our insurance company, Chief thinks they'll fix it, and um, w that that'd be great. But if for any reason it goes south on us too, we might need money for apparatus like this then too. I I do believe, uh, as I mentioned, I even had in our, our newsletter recently, uh, the fire chief recommended possibly pur us purchasing a uh, mini squad, 
mini squads would um, cost almost half what a pumper truck does. Pumper trucks are a half a million dollars. The mini squads a quarter million. But we might get caught in the switches here if, if the truck need, needs to be replaced for any reason. We don't know where we stand. So in the meantime, um, we only bought, typically we buy three squad squad cars, sometimes four. This year we bought one. Um, we dialed everything down. We didn't do any parking lot replacements. When it came to the Heritage, we um, we didn't do any window replacements. Uh, we didn't replace the pool we were supposed to. We dialed everything down. So, again, deferring deferring purchases is one thing, but we still need to plan, And which is why I said to Kent, um, where do we stand with this kind of thing then, too? And I appreciate the couple of different options being a 3% or 4.9% or uh, differential. And, I again, I appreciate the explanation where we stand with either. Um, any... Uh, Trustee McGlaurin, I'd kind of hand the gavel to you if you want to ask or, or take any kind of a poll where everybody would like to stand with, with in this matter. Um, yes, I believe that would be a good idea. And I will start and just bring up, I mean, especially at this point in time um, and with the financial hardships that everybody has had, um, I couldn't in good conscience go with the 4.99. Um, so my preference would be to go in the in the three percent range. Mm -hmm. um, Trustee Juarez, um, I will agree with that three percent range for the same reasons. Okay, <laughs> Trustee Navas Barza. I would be in favor of three percent as well for the reasons that you both had mentioned. Okay. Trustee Zielinski? I guess I'd be leaning toward the 3% out of those two uh, options. Trustee Dalzell? Hmm? I'd like to split the baby and go 4%. Um, we've already identified that we've got some very large expenses coming up. Uh, as the uh, previous finance director has indicated, we've been uh, good about saving towards those things. Uh, the problem is going to be is if we don't address it now, it becomes more problematic later on. So if as we move forward, we attempt to sit there and to replace some of the road and bridge equipment, some of the fire department equipment, um, the projects that we've got for the capital, uh, these are th necessary expenses. And if we finance those, then all we're going to do is incur a larger cost rather than sitting there and continuing to pay down the debt. While I appreciate tough time, uh, at the same point in time, there's a cost of doing business. And if we start reducing the dollar amounts that we collect in order to maintain the levels of service, uh, then the only other choice for us is to figure out what level of service we're going to reduce without. Trustee Murphy, um, I would, I would agree with um, uh, Trustee Dizel. I think that you know, with I would rather pay a little bit more and go four percent than pay interest um, on any purchases that we make and literally throw money down the toilet. So I would be more in favor of four percent as well. All right, well, that leaves us with four at 3% and only two at 4%. <laughs> so the overall consensus, Kent, would be you, at 3%. Well, we just got done with the discussion. Yeah. yeah. I, I was so just after the discussion was there, mm -hmm. uh, I think that maybe we should, mm -hmm. you know, re-poll the members to sit there and see if maybe it was um, any other mm -hmm. thoughts. Kent, Kent, I'm, I'm very, very close. Give me one <laughs> second. I'm no, sorry. that's all right. We can, we can move on with our meeting, too. But uh, Kent, Kent I, I talk slow. That would be helpful, <laughs> yeah. That would be very helpful. Give me one second. Kent, I'd like to everyone to kind of digest this a little bit, too, because this was a lot to read up on. Can we um, follow up with you next Monday, maybe? How's that? Yes. If you, uh, that's, uh, what, what date's the December? First Monday in December is... I believe it's the 2nd, maybe, right? December 2nd. Yeah, December 2nd. Yeah, 
December 7th is the board meeting. Okay, that, that buys us a little time. Because uh, I need to, in the newspaper, 7 to 14 days before that, and then I need to make, hit the time. I think we've got more than enough time to do that. How, how about if I ask Trustee McLaurin to re-poll everybody next Monday, just in case anybody, you know, has second thoughts? And I will... I will tell you what, I will put at 3% and 4%, I will make sure that you all have the dollar amount. Um, I think you are right. I think it's going to be in the $3 and something cents a uh, month uh, increase for uh, a 4%. The 3% is more like a $2 and uh, 70 cent a month uh, what you, what, increase. What can I what can on the tax bill? Uh, if you were paying uh, six uh, around the six thousand dollars a year tax bill, it'd be another two dollars and seventy cents versus uh, probably three twenty-five, something like that. I don't have a calculator in front mm -hmm. of me, um, but you're not taught either way. I know it sounds like a really huge, you know, the percent sounds big, but the dollar amount isn't, um, and would be sort of uh, less than a half of one percent of your overall tax bill. So if you look at it, either way, you're looking at, at you know half half a percent, less than a half a percent of your one, half of one percent of your tax bill. Um, it's not that number sounds smaller mm -hmm. <laughs> than the other one, and the reason for that is because um, the school is, taxing is so high. <laughs> no, I won't quite say it that way, but I will say but that the village's is. portion of your property tax bill is not that large compared to a lot of the other taxing. Um, and so it, it really, uh, to be frank, it's not going to mean that much of it to your tax bill either way from the village of Alsip. Um, if you're concerned about your tax bill, you're attending the wrong meeting. Um, there's uh, a few other taxing bodies there worth uh, going to that will have a much larger impact on your tax bill. Well, given the brief discussion that we've had <laughs> uh, with uh, with Trustee Delzell, uh, he highlighted some really good points. And then with the figures that you presented just on the fly, I, I would then um, lean more towards the 4%. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I like if Trustee uh, mm -hmm. McLaurin polls everybody next Monday, mm -hmm. and we'll get a hold of you by Tuesday morning so that you can work on your on that. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for not making me come next Monday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't need to come, Kent, but if you can get me the figures. Yeah, absolutely. For, for both of Yes, I will do that. So do it at 3, 4, and the 4.99 just so we'll that we, we have not them all, and then we can re-poll next Monday, and I can get back with you, to you with an answer. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Thanks again, Kent. We really appreciate your help. Thank you, Kent. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions for um, Finance mm -hmm. Committee? Uh, that, that's all I have under finance. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I, I don't think we have anything else. That well, just in the interest of uh, folks that are here and, and the audience, uh, to actually, I'd like to go out of order here as a committee meeting. Um, I'd like to jump down to planning and zoning and licenses. Trustee Juarez, uh, we had some gentlemen here to make a presentation. Uh, do you want to go with your report, please? Yes, um, I have a presentation of a list of licenses dated October 26, 2020 through November 6, 2020. And I also have a presentation by Devlon Cotton of Legacy Crema Cremations, LLC, regarding 11615 South Austin, Unit D, Elsip, Illinois. And we have um, Mr. Cotton here to give a presentation. So, uh, Mr. Devlon Cotton, uh, Devlon, you want to come up and uh, grab a mic, please? You want to speak to that gentleman? Uh, trustees, I, I talked to Trustee Juarez before the meeting started. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Cotton and his associates. Um, they had uh, been speaking with my assistant about the possibility of introducing or having a uh, legacy cremations uh, business in our community. And ultimately, the board decides uh, after, plan after a planning and zoning recommendation. So I wanted to ask was... Mr. Cotton make a presentation to the board what he was uh, what he had in mind, and then maybe um, we can take a poll of uh, whether or not to refer this to plan and zoning then too. This way it saves them time rather than going to plan and zoning. If ultimately the board's going to decide the same way, we we can make that referral and stuff then too. Okay, so go ahead, Mr. Cotton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Devilon Cotton. To the left of me is Michael Gilliard, uh, funeral director, uh, Tri-State, Michigan, Illinois and uh, Indiana. 
To the right of me, we have a 30-year veteran, uh, Mr. Strong, USS Theodore Roosevelt uh, Navy, which is our mechanical engineer. Um, we have uh, 20 years in the um, cremation business, downstate Indiana, Legacy Cremations, uh, my third generation uh, operator. Started in 99 um, at Dignity Memorial, uh, where I was a um, groundskeeper. Started as a grave digger and moved up into, uh, we uh, have our own mortuary in Chicago Heights there, Family Mortuary Services, a 3,500 square feet unit uh, for embalming practices with all the different uh, funeral homes that's uh, surrounding within a 100 mile radius. So um, we chose ALSIP, um, uh, an industrial area in ALSIP on 116th there uh, as a possible unit there. Uh, it's uh, 2,000 square feet. Uh, which can house uh, one human and one pet retort um, for cremations. Uh, one flame and one aqua cremation for the pet. When I say aqua cremations, it's different from the flame cremation where we're using water, more green form of a uh, cremation uh, disposition other than the flame that will blow out the stacks. Um, and we feel it's a good, good location. Um, it's in the industrial um, zoning. There is no residence uh, 4,000 feet from the uh, property. Um, neighboring the property is the uh, transfer station. Um, it's waste management. Waste management. Waste there. management, yeah. yeah. So um, very good location. And then it's the cemetery uh, right next to there. Um, I'd like to know if we can get that approval from, from you guys uh, to move forward and um, head the zoning. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything, I, I'd like to answer them now. Uh, as far as the uh, smell is concerned, um, our uh, retorts, our state-of-the-art equipment, is maintained by cremation systems right there in South Holland. They are phone call away. They are uh, very prompt, and they will maintain the, the, uh, the equipment so there won't be any part, uh, problems with smell or uh, burning or anything like that you know, when it comes to the cremation process. Um, company comes out yearly or 300 cremations, whichever one comes first. Mr. Kent, can I ask you, I, I've never heard of um, the, like the aqua, aquamation before. I, can you, is there a way you can explain that even on camera here and stuff? That it's, um, yeah, thank you, Mary. Yes, sure. That's a good question. It's uh, called alkaline hydrolysis. Uh, they use a solution uh, like lye where you could put the, the case inside the, um, the bat for pets and human. They have a human retort uh, as well, but they, uh, it takes about three or four hours. But they use water uh, to mix up with the different chemicals, and it's also friendly for the, um, for the uh, drainage as well uh, to, um, to kind of get the bone fragments a little more outside of the flame and make it go a little quicker and more cleaner. Okay. So that's the more green uh, approach to cremation, alkaline hydrolysis. Okay. And it's, uh, it's illegal in Illinois, and a lot of states are picking on with it as well. Very expensive, but uh, it's very eco-friendly as well. Um, it, it, as you mentioned, you've got how many crematories do you have right now? One. Just the one in, in Chicago Heights? Yeah. Okay. And obviously, as you said, as far as emitting odors and whatnot, you have an odor mitigation program and so forth then, too, that you don't – what is the odor? That is there any odor? No you, odor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's pseudoscience, um, you know, speculations on the website about different odors coming from it, but we have a, a Matthews Power Pack, and um, the, it's, a, it's, it's furnished with a primary burner and a secondary burner. Uh, secondary burner is more like a, a 1800 – degree burning, which it which captures any particles before it releases through the stack and burns them in and takes it down to the olfactory at the bottom and where we scoop it out the bottom. Okay. And it's maintenance. So there won't be any smells or any smoke. It's invisible coming out the stacks with today's technology. And is there any any particles that emitted into the air? No particles. And you said for someone to use your services, it's the cemeteries that go through you, not People knocking at your door? Well, knock, knocking at the door, they will go through uh, the funeral homes. Mm -hmm. uh, we work directly with the funeral homes and uh, mortuaries, and also uh, on the pet side, the veterinarian, the vet's hospital. So 
if you would like to take your love with pet or anything, you have to take it to those facilities and they will contact us. We can arrange pickup, removal, uh, and bring them to the facility. And, uh, and we will supply uh, the urns, the jewelry, or any keepsakes uh, at that time. And then we will place it to the hands of the funeral director. And the funeral director and the funeral homes will in turn give it to the family. Mr. Roosevelt, is this the, this the oven that you use? Is this Matthew's equipment? Is this the exact machine yes. that you use? Okay. Yes. And, and I see on here too, Mr. Mr. Cotton. Obviously, the, you just renewed your license with the Funeral Home Association. How long have you had a license? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Oh, yes. Okay. You know, it's always, I was just looking at the last page in here, too. Um, obviously, it depends sometimes, but ballpark, how much is a cremation these days? I, I have zero idea. I am not. I don't know. Cremations uh, on a direct cremation scale typically goes for $995. Mm -hmm. uh, without the viewing, straight cremation, um, you know, in and out the door. Um, as far as viewing capabilities for other homes or other cremation sites, it can go as well up to 2500 so ours, um, we're, we're a little more uh, cost effective um, uh, nowadays with the budget crisis and everything that's going on in the world. We have dropped our prices low to uh, only deal with the funeral homes directly instead of giving the price out to the public. So the funeral home actually makes the price to the family. It seems like more than half of the funerals that you go to these days are all used that's the same process. I mean, you know, back in the day we didn't, but... Obviously, you even see billboards going down the expressway now advertising this and stuff then, too. So Yes. Um, I actually, I, I gave the trustees uh, a little something on behalf of um, Trustee Warriors just to help the conversation on our ordinance uh, reg regarding cemeteries, crematories, and other places of burial. Um, basically, what it says is the authorization uh, required to establish a crematory um, no person shall lay out or plot or establish any cemetery or crematory or any other place for burial of dead within the corporate limits um, or within one mile of a corporate limit of the village, uh, which, you know, the, the language is kind of dated. I, you know, I, when I was looking at that, I don't have the date on that, but I believe this went back pretty far. Um, so I know the language seems a little bit vague. Um, also, crematories and other places of burial shall be licensed by the village. Uh, those cemeteries um, subject to jurisdiction of the controller, which that's a cemetery. Um, there's a section on cemeteries here, but when it comes to crematories, uh, really this is all about uh, approving a variation, which, again, this would go through planning and zoning commission that we have here then, too. And certainly they can they can hear as well. Ultimately, it'll be the, this village board that would decide. Uh, the Plan and Zoning uh, Commission is really a an advisory board. You know, they would make a recommendation, yes or no, to go to go with uh, if they if they wanted to approve this. They would send it back to us, and then we would hold a meeting, a board meeting, to approve or not, and stuff. Then too, the reason I had, as I started this meeting with was or this this part of the meeting is um, just to get some direction from the board. If the board wants to uh, refer this to plan and zoning, then I would ask for a, just a consensus uh, poll taken to refer that to plan and zoning or not. If the board, for any reason, was not interested in um, having a crematory, uh, certainly you would not be advising them, you know, referring them to a plan and zoning commission then, too. So um, did anyone have any questions for Mr. Cotton and his associates here, too? Certainly, everybody's familiar with dignity. Is that who you were working with before? Yeah. Am I, I apologize to Mr. Guy. Am I saying is it the Avalon? Is that how you yes. say it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you were with dignity for a long time. Obviously, they're a big name in, in um, cemeteries and so forth. Then too. So, um, would I, nobody had any questions or anything? No. Thank you for the packet with all the thorough information and a lot of the questions were answered. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I would ask uh, Madam Clerk, he, he pull the board, and it, this would be to refer him to plan and zoning. Mayor, this has been approached once before, 
back the uh, gentleman was Joe McCarthy. He had made the presentation initially, mm -hmm. and there was quite a concern from a lot of the general public with regards to having the crematorium. And if I'm not mistaken, Mr. McCarthy's proposal wasn't too far away from where this location was being proposed now. Um, I, for one, I don't have a problem with the crematorium being established here in the town in that location. Um, I think a lot of the people who had spoke out against it, who we represent, uh, they were more concerned about the ghoul factor. Mm -hmm. So their concern was um, how the remains are brought into the custody of the crematory and uh, uh, obviously in this I'm sure that that everybody and every person that they deal with is treated with the utmost of respect. Um, it's becoming more and more realistic and uh, in fact that's the uh, the method that I chose for my father and uh, so it's a uh, it, it has to happen someplace but just like cell phone towers most people say not my backyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mayor, yes. With respect of uh, how the remain, how the, uh, the the cases are, are brought in, and it's uh, the location where we at. Like I said, it's, it's invisible uh, to the public, so remains will be brought in through a. There's a one-way street there that that uh, closes out at the end, right next to the unit there. There's a mechanic shop or anything like that, so it'll be brought in through funeral home cars, uh, removal vehicles, and they are they're inconspicuous. Um, professionally, um, you know, blacked out vehicles, whatever the case may be, whatever the funeral has, or whatever um, allied removal that removes for uh, the city of Chicago, uh, they will bring them in, uh, bring thing, bring the, uh, the cases in. So it would be inconspicuous and uh, with dignity as well, you know. So the, uh, the, you know, the vast majority of public won't even know that it's going on. And do you allow viewing at that? Would you allow viewing at that site, or would that be something done elsewhere? Elsewhere, yeah, elsewhere. But, but there, are, there are some uh, religious um, organizations or families that will like um, the older son will press the button mm -hmm. um, for their father, um, and, and, and they, that we will op we will permit that. We're, we're multicultural uh, in our uh, in our rights. So. Understood. Um, anyway, uh, Trustee Juarez, I'm sorry, this is uh, your committee. Mm -hmm. What would uh, you want? Did, I think it's, we can take a poll to uh, see if you want to refer to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are just uh, polling for consensus to refer under planning and zoning letter number two to planning and zoning. Commission, the, yes. Commission. Okay. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Zielinski? No. Trustee Juarez? Yes. Trustee McLawhorn? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Navas Barza? Yes. The poll was in favor to refer to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. So that's what I would ask the gentleman is, you know, tomorrow, um, if you get a hold of our building department, uh, you can um, make arrangements. There's an application and so forth. Um, Roger, you want to give him one of your cards, maybe? And uh, he can get you an application for that. And uh, we'll, you, 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 they'll set a, a hearing date and all that kind of thing. Then too, they, they meet twice a month, and they can hear that case. And they'll make a they'll make a um, recommendation back to this board. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Mr. Cotton, can I ask you to sign in for me, please? Thank and you Mayor, very before much. we go too much further, yeah. I'd like to make sure that this gets referred back to the committee with regards to that uh, ordinance, because as you said, it's. Hole you need. Oh, yeah, everywhere. it's very vague. Thank you. And and I'll, I'll do exactly that then, too. Thank you, Mr. Cotton. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. You know, Joe, you're not offending us if you want to leave. That's fine. That's why I wanted to get you off. If you want to stay for the rest of the meeting, be my guest. You know, but I wanted to get you guys up. Thank you for coming out tonight and stuff, then, too. Okay. Um, next, well, let's go back to our reports and the fire committee, Trustee Murphy. Um, other than the uh, the um, the truck that you had mentioned, uh, there's no report, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, police and traffic safety, Trustee Dozal. No report this evening, Mayor. Okay. Um, 
public work and public well we don't have a ball launch right now but public works for trustee whereas i have a presentation of a public works um dated october 2020 monthly activities report that's on there all right sir and water trustee nava esparza no report this evening there okay building and health trustee Zelensky. I have a presentation of the health department October 2020 monthly activity report and for building I have a presentation of the building department October 2020 monthly activity report also uh, we have the number of permits that were issued uh, was 138 and the amount collected was twenty one thousand one hundred and twenty six dollars that's all I have this evening okay Thank you. Next, Human Resource and Insurance, Trustee Murphy. I have a request to approve the job description for advertising for a human resource manager um, and also request to approve the amendment of Ordinance 2017-8-2 and Ordinance enacting Article 23, Human Resources Manager of the Municipal Code for the Village of Alsip, Illinois. That's so, all I have, sir. So I put... I put these two items on here. Um, one, I uh, want obviously, unfortunately, um, our um, village, and she's here this evening, Shanae, if you want to come up. Um, unfortunately, Shanae Hunter is going to be changing jobs. She's going back to the corporate sector, and we're going to miss her very much. Uh, but uh, I wanted to just make sure with the board before we start advertising for that this week. Uh, Sinead had given us ample notice and so forth. Uh, you're going to be here till how long, Chanel? The 19th? Yeah. Sinead? Okay. Sure. And um, what you call it? We do have a we do have a job description for that. Uh, I sent it out in a package, uh, packet rather, to everybody. Um, did anyone have any questions on the job description? No. And uh, the other question on here was. We had an ordinance that was approved back in 2017 that had the um, the HR committee. Well, let's put this, yeah, the actually the village trustees were part of the hiring process, and you know I don't I don't mind if you want to keep it that way. I just thought sometimes to you know, to simplify the language uh, to take that out and just again like we do like with all other appointments, you, it's an appointment by the mayor with the consent of the board it makes it easier for scheduling sometimes too because otherwise you're trying to get trustees in here during the day for meetings and stuff like that when we can expedite them a little bit easier and stuff then too um, we've just went through this recently and certainly uh, while Shanae is still with us until the 19th if we have an applicant you know, certainly you and I are going to be screening said person uh, if it goes longer than that uh, I'll have to bring another personnel that that's here at the village as well if maybe even um, Trustee Murphy can certainly sit out. You're the chairperson for sure. this as well, then too. You know, but well, so I'm just trying to simplify it because sometimes you put too many cooks in the kitchen, and you're trying to get too many people to show up at a meeting, and it's hard to schedule. That's all I was getting. At. I mean, if everybody wanted to leave it the way it stands, that's up to you folks and so forth. But uh, I didn't have a, a problem with the language. I was just trying to simplify the process, is all. Any any questions on it or anything? Okay. And I have no issues with your recommended change, Mayor. Okay. Then I'll um, I'll put that up for uh, I'll bring it back t for a change. For I'm sorry to amend that language just to st uh, just to make it easier for uh, interview pr uh, purposes and so forth. But uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll bring it back next week to everybody for approval. Then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mayor, that should be placed under trustee Going to do ordinance on that. Okay. That's fine. It, it, it I, that's fine. And we just, um, I just pull up because we were talking about the HR purposes. That's all. So we can do that. So I'll, I'll bring that back to you, Trustees, uh, Trustees Linsky, next week then too. Okay. Thank you. So right. H, the, um, I'm sorry, um, Shanae or Ms. Hunter's spot is an appointed position by the mayor. It, yes. That's okay. the, the, um, Yes, it is. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. We know it's I was not. under the impression that's, that's that right. it's not an appointed position. That's right. I, it reports I'm, to the mayor. Yeah, she reports yeah. to the mayor. But actually, I stand corrected. That's right. You and I were just looking at that. Mm -hmm. HR is not an appointed position. It's a hired position. Right. Then I would like to stay on the process of doing it how we did it last time. I was in on the interviews with, um, you there? Mm -hmm. or, I believe it was Trustee Pierce, yeah. yourself, and Trustee McGreal. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. 
Yeah, I don't care. It's just that we we want to meet during the day. That's all. Instead of at night and stuff. That's all. So I don't care if if the if you want to if you want to be involved in that process. But then we'll have to get um, we'll have to get a couple of trustees involved. Trustee Murphy, I'll keep you apprised of it as Thank well. You. Here, you know, you're on that committee. Um, like I said, I didn't care the way it was designed. I was just trying to expedite this thing a little bit easier. That's all. And I will say, especially with the um, you know use of Zoom meetings or Teams, that um, maybe the availability with the different schedules it should make it a little bit easier with scheduling for interviews. If some people can chime in remotely, you know. I think I think what's important though too, as long as we're having this discussion here and now. Is um, one thing we didn't do when we hired Shanae was we didn't have a uh, salary um, range, did we? In that, and I, no. I'm, I'm, be I'm becoming a believer in that because I, I don't, I, I really don't want to waste anybody's time if for some reason we're one place and you have somebody that's making twice that much money for any reason that I don't want to give them you know false hope and you know the, the fact that we're bringing you in. And wasting our time and theirs at the same time, then too, you know. So. so, so the proposal is: Are we changing the ordinance, or is it now there's three trustees going to sit there and sit down the interviews? I'm going to bring it back to the board next week for an approval, you know, and and whether or not the board wants to, because I'd like to get that was an old that was a different board, but I'd like to have this board's take on whether or not they want to be a part of that process. Right, we just talked about changing it. It was selected by the mayor, approved by the board of trustees. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was saying. It didn't necessarily bother me, but I, it wasn't. It was another board that w that was here before. If this board um, disagreed with that process, we can certainly change that ordinance. I would be. I would. I'm okay with what's presented to change it, where the mayor, since, since the super the manager reports to you, correct? Right. And it, even though it's not an appointed position, but still. If one trustee sits in, maybe the chair of that committee, I can see that. But to have three trustees sitting on that process, I think it's it's just why <laughs> to me. That's where I was going with this, right? So I, I would be in favor of the the proposed amendment um, to the ordinance. The chair, at least the chair of the the committee, and then if if the chair is available, and then the mayor. Uh, interviewing the candidate. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, we'd have to, if, if for reason I'm, I don't have an HR person at the time, I'll have to bring somebody else in with me and mm -hmm. stuff. Then so too. why am I on a committee that I can't participate in? It's this is a well right now. Cool. I'm, uh, I'm on the, the committee for place. I have no. Selection. But if I choose to participate, I should be able to participate. I have no selection process in that. If I choose Fire to participate, I should be able to participate. How many trustees have said there are the interviews for the 100 employees that we have? Okay, and this is my fourth year here on the board. I sat in on Shanae's interview, and I felt it was a good decision that we made together as a group. We all work together as a group. That decision should be made together as a group. 125 employees in the village, how many do we have? 140. 140. 145. And, and they're all Why are you so against it? I don't understand. If it's not bothering you and it's not your time, it's my time, then what's what's the issue? I, I don't understand the purpose. Agree, because, because that's what I choose to do. Somebody who is the professional who sits there and does the job and who knows it best of all of us to sit there and to run those things. It just makes no sense whatsoever to have an elected official involved in that. Ours isn't to sit there and so select those people other than the approval. Ours is to sit there and determine the vision of the community moving forward. Just, it's minutia. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it's why we part, get involved in the minutia. It's a part of us, hi us hiring Shanae was a group effort 
And actually, Shanae, I pushed for you the hardest. Mm -hmm. And she was a great fit. She worked out great. Absolutely. And I think that being a trustee, I should be able, speaking for myself, I should be able to choose who, also choose who we're working with in the village. Well, th the thing, like I said. I don't I, understand what the problem is, Mayor. If I choose to do that, what, what's the issue? I'm on the HR committee. Because there's a difference between being an elected official and operations. You know, like right now as an elected official, you, your primary responsibilities are policy making and expenditures. My job is to manage operations. And operations is basically what we're talking about here, is actually hiring somebody for a position. Is tr as Trustee Dalzell just said, I mean, I, I wasn't annoyed by it. All I want to do is I want to simplify a process and, and not have so many hands in there. In other words, I shouldn't have to be sitting there competing with, like, let's say, like trustees that are sitting in a room. I shouldn't have to compete to hire somebody. I'm, if I'm the one running operations and I decide what hours they work and everything else, it just gets right to the point. You don't, as Trustee Dalzell kind of said, there's less minutia, and I can get to the point of the person I want to identify with then, too. And if I have a small committee to do that, to qualify the said person, whether I have a, an HR person or even, like, if I had to go to um, the chairperson for that committee, I just want to consolidate that so that it's an easier process of interviewing and so forth than too. Much like any jobs that most of us have taken, we haven't sat there in front of like a board of people. We sat and interviewed with, with a couple of people. So why wasn't it an issue last time when we did it? I mean, there was no, there was really no issue. We all made it to the meetings. We are to the interviews. There was, we didn't have to cancel or reschedule because we all made it, set a date. And if I can make it, great. And if I can't, then that's. Well, it's because obviously the board at the time felt that they wanted to interject. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. That's never been done before, and that's the first time I've been here to, since 2011 as a trustee. And it worked out great. We had never interjected ourselves into a hiring process. We always left it up to, to management. But it worked out great. We always left it up to the operations manager, which is essentially me. But it worked out great. It uh, wasn't an issue. But everybody, in my opinion, everyone sits down with kind of a boilerplate questions, you know, and it's just it's just repetitive, you know, that's all. It just gets to the point. And it doesn't have to be, you know. Well, you already made up table, your mind. Kind of you decision. already made up your mind. So why put it out there to ask what we want if your man was your mind was already made up? Oh, I have to. I have to ask the board if they want to amend an ordinance because that was an ordinance mm -hmm. form. So I have to ask the question, and I was the one that redlined it to show you what the difference was in the ordinance, and that's what I'm explaining here right now, is to simplify that process. We can eliminate the idea of having multiple people in on that interview. And much like we just did with the finance director just recently, you know, it was just you and it was myself and HR, and we included uh, the, the uh, chairperson for finance and one person from that department on a second interview. But the initial, which it would, you know, we didn't, it, you know, in other words, uh, p p potential candidates shouldn't have to sit there and be filtered over maybe five, six people, that kind of thing, yeah, too. Um, I don't want to put you in the middle of this at all, Shanae, but uh, it, it, even in, in, yeah, but even with in, yeah, even with in HR world, is what is what's best practice? You know, I mean, you, you know, I don't want you to get in the middle of anything, but what's best practice in your um, opinion? You know, obviously, uh, when you are interviewing and there's multiple people, it is more intimidating. Um, however, like I said, I do understand as a committee member that you may want to have some involvement in selecting the candidate. So, um, like with anything, I think maybe first round of interviews, yes, you do with the, the hiring manager. If I'm still here, I'll, more, I'll be more than happy to sit in on interviews and help select the candidate. And then as you progress to second round and you have those final candidates selected, then we could do something that's potentially a, more of a panel style interview. And, you know, whether it's, because I do think that um, payroll should definitely be included in the interview process because that position works very closely with the HR position. So, um, like I said, if you have those initial interviews and then maybe have your finalists selected and someone or if they do it collectively or if it's just the chair from the committee has the opportunity to kind of just screen and get a feel for that candidate as well. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to read just the, the one paragraph here. So when it comes to the position of the human resource manager, shall be responsible for, for the day-to-day -day personnel matters, 
personnel matters and the development and administration of personnel policies. The human resource manager shall report to the mayor. And the second paragraph is um, upon vacancy, upon a vacancy occurring in the human resource manager position, the replacement man, the replacement manager shall be selected by the mayor. Now the current language says selected by the mayor and board of trustees and approved by the board of trustees. The change I was inferring to here was upon, vac upon a vacancy occurring in the human resource manager position, the replacement manager shall be selected by the mayor and approved by the board of trustees. That's what it says, just so everybody, for the record, so everybody knows how this goes, that's all. So you're still going to be approving this person, and as is, is, uh, HR just pointed out then too, if, if we needed more people on the second interview, certainly I'm not, I'm, that's what I was kind of saying before, I'm not opposed to having more of the, like the committee involved in that process on a second interview and so forth, you know, so. And when this ordinance was initially proposed or actually passed, um, the HR manager reported to the department instructor. Yes. It was the majority of the board at this level, when this board is one, was they changed that to report to the mayor. So if that person reports to the mayor, I certainly don't understand why the mayor couldn't sit there performing the interviews, obviously with the, uh, the HR director being there take care of these things. It doesn't make sense that interject more people they don't report that. If I may, Mayor, go ahead. Uh, first of all, I don't see what the harm would be to have somebody sit in on an interview, but the only thing I'm, I would like to ask is uh, what you read off already was uh, the only part that I found in the packet and the first thing that was requested was an approval of a job description. Mm -hmm. We don't have a copy of that, do we? Not as of now. We're just approving that a job description will go out, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I have to say about that is I'd, I'd like to see it before it goes out, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, if we can actually start with a lower starting point for the salary, and you can make the high point whatever you want. It's just, you know, just to give the board some you know, some consideration to actually have some kind of uh, uh, negotiating power, some, uh, some you know, levity for that. You know what, we can, uh, that's a great point, Trustee, and certainly um, we can, we can certainly do that. Uh, we, um, we're actually going to, we have a closed session set up after this, but I think that would fall under that purview too, so we could probably have that discussion about salary real quick then too. All right, thanks. Okay. If there's nothing else, Mary, I had uh, just one more quick note. Yeah. Um, under insurance, and it's, it's not on here, but there was an interview, um, actually a meeting conducted with Alliant Mesero Rep. Rene uh, Formel um, is regards to the renewals for Blue Cross Blue Shield Medical and Dental. And uh, there, was, there was some good news is that we are trending uh, below what the expected claim liability plan is for this year. Uh, which hopefully will get favor favorable numbers uh, moving forward. But uh, just to note that the um, uh, October and December um, uh, are still out there. Um, and as, uh, as a self-insured plan, it's essential for the village to establish and uh, grow its reserves in cases of higher claims, uh, in, in higher claim years. Um, the village protects the uh, village employees from experiencing uh, premium surges in case of large claims, claim increases. Uh, this reserve was established last year and is recommended that the village continue to add to the reserve funds until it's reached 25 percent. This is what Kent had talked about um, last year that we, um, that when we started that. Um, the average is about 625,000. Uh, we can potentially accomplish this by the end of 2022. And uh, Alliant Mesero has uh, agreed to uh, work with us to develop mid-market uh, comparable rates. Uh, so, and that's all I have, sir. Trustee Murphy, could you forward that information to us sure. for the minutes? Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, then we'll move along here. The special committee reports the uh, economic development, Trustee Nava Esparza. No report this evening, Mayor. Okay. Village Properties, Trustee McGlohorn. Um, I have a request for approval of an agreement with Comcast to provide services to both Heritage One and Heritage Two complexes as the exclusive contractor for both. So I put this on the agenda and I, I told um, Trustee McGlohorn, uh, Roger Early was helping. Roger, you want to grab a mic, please? <laughs> um, w the village owns uh, 255 and older communities known as the Heritage Complexes. And uh, the five-year contract that we had with AT&T expired almost a year ago, so we've been going month to month. They are the exclusive contractor to the Heritage Apartments. We've got 512 ap apartments there. And um, their initial proposal was a 10-year contract. I felt that was a little bit strong, and I asked for a five-year compromise instead. So what everyone's seeing there, and I don't think it's fair to share the numbers out loud. Everyone saw this on their computers to say that, you know, there is a compens... Well, I guess we can say it, right? This is public knowledge. This is... Um, there was option one, uh, exclusive marketing. There's a compensation uh, that they... Like, they would give us $64,000 with a revenue share, uh, complete new wiring and clean up uh, at no cost and a, and a 10 year contract. Option two was uh, only 25,600 in compensation toward uh, what we choose to do with that money. And typically like when we did at and I remember the previous mayor and, and the board, we actually reinvested that money in the, the clubhouses for new TV sets and some for bingo and all that kind of thing at them too. Is this clubhouse? That is correct. Both places, and, but that's with a five-year contract. So that's really what what we're proposing to the board, uh, Roger. If I'm shortening my conversation to say it's either a five-year or a ten. Personally, I was I, I know the compensation isn't as it's only a third of what the tenure is, but I just thought locking the, the whole complex into a tenure. Contract seem kind of strong to me. That's all. So, Roger, my first question would be: What impact does this have on the residents? They get a discounted rate um, through AT and T right now. Um, Com or Comcast Xfinity is looking to do that same deal. They would also um, market it for video, video and internet, and then the combinations. It is a revenue share. Um, percentage with us which doesn't really amount to too much over the five years or the ten years so it's really not going to be substantial it's the substantial is the upfront cost for us um, we're basically passing out the pamphlets and doing that the one nice thing that we would gain out of this would be all 512 units would have all new wiring wire molding so it would clean up uh, both of the complexes um, at at this point, AT and T sent us a letter about a, just over a year ago. They do not want to do that revenue share with us, so they are still offering at this time the service for the clubhouse, um, as as is Xfinity. So by making this change, we would get an upgrade and some potential compensation. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, just one quick question. So is, is internet and cable, in this case, included in the rent? No, it is no. not. It is on... This would be a, well, something that they pay out of pocket. That is correct. Okay. We wanted to make this exclusive. That's the whole point. Is okay. It's exclusivity, and um, I just thought ten years was a long time. So there wouldn't to lock be any direct in. TV, satellite dishes. No, no they, they could still they could still have it. We we would not be saying here. Here's a pamphlet for AT and T. We would not state that we would recommend it, or we're actually going to be passing out pamphlets for X Xfinity. Um, for both of the complexes if we were to move forward with this. I think what he's saying, though, is do I have to take Comcast or can I be a direct you would TV not. customer? You would not. You can you be a direct TV person if you, 
Right. That is okay. correct. They just want to be the exclusive contractor. They want to be the exclusive to contractor right. for both Heritage One and Two. <clears throat> and what would the cost be for each of those? It would depend on package. the package that was chosen by the tenant. I mean, can we get a comparison of a five-year contract with both of them compared to a ten-year contract with both of them with the compensation? That's what he's saying. The, comp the revenue share is marginal. It's not even worth it. But what you're looking at are the two things on here is the compensation for the tenure was 64000 versus 25000 out right. of five. But, but the exclusivity, if you're a tenant there, AT&T comes through on your phone. So you can still get you right. can still get direct TV from AT&T because it's through the ditch. This here, they're going to cable all the different buildings. So if you want Xfinity, then it's going to be there as well. The resident still has a choice. I, it's not going to market it as the heritage. As the heritage, they're going to they're going to send out these brochures. But what I'm saying is there's still a cost to the village. No, no. no there is no cost to the village. So they're giving us that's our compensation for, for nothing? Yes. That's our compensation. Yeah. Okay. When we did that back like in 2012 maybe, I think it was about $38,000 off the top of my head. I think it was something like right around there. And we shared that between the two clubhouses. Right. And be a recommendation that we do the same thing again. My only other concern is, is that uh, it shows the proposal expiration date between September 30th of this year. Uh, you know what? He November was, 30th. He issued, he sent this, Roger, what happened? He, he sent this to us. He sent it over previously and then he redid it right. with the five year. So we'll just ask him to clean that up and stuff then too. I so, can definitely do that. Um, again, uh, just so we've got this correct so we can bring this to the board for approval. Uh, did everyone want us to go with five year or ten year? Based on the way internet and cable services have been changing lately, I would say go with the five year. Trustee mm -hmm. Navas Wars or um, Trustee Wars? Five years fine. Okay. I was thinking if we're getting free money, we might as well go for more if the residents still have a choice and you know, comparable services. Why not go for extra money to repair and Improved clubhouses. Five years, you're going to get it again. You're going to get it again five years. Yeah, 15000 less, but... I mean, have we had a problem with them in the past to where we shouldn't go a little bit further? Well, I said, well, we're with AT&T right now. So this is a change in vendor for us. <laughs> Do we anticipate any? I would... Re if I was... If, if you're asking my recommendation, I would do a five-year. Technology changes so quickly, they will come in and, and redo the uh, whatever technology it is in five years. Plus, more and more, you're, you're beginning all the Internet of Things. So all the devices, the TVs, the microwaves, the washers, the dryers, the everything is becoming more and more Internet connected. Mm -hmm. So, as that technology changes, um, this equipment will be outdated. And well, that's kind of where I'm going. Years. Is it, even to rewire the place, <laughs> let's say eight years or nine years from now, and you and some like Trustee Dalz all said, now all the all the all of the technology grows up. Like, well, no, you're already wired for this, and you're stuck with that. That kind of thing, then too. Yeah, so, but he wants five years. That's fine. I yeah. see it as a win-win, one way or another. I mean, we're getting. Something for nothing, why not? Right. Uh, five years is it's fine. Not nothing. We're advertising Adver for well, them. Trustee Murphy? <laughs> I would say five years as well. Okay. Trustee Navas Barza? Five years. Okay. So that would be, Roger, that's what we'll do then. We'll, we'll promote that to the board for approval at our next board meeting uh, as far as a five year contract. Okay. I will reiterate it to Gilbert and ask him to clean up the copies. Thanks. For and next ask week. him to send us over a contract so we can have our attorney look at it too. Okay. I definitely will. Okay. Thanks, Roger. That's all I have under village properties, Mayor. Thank you. Next, ordinance and legislation, uh, Trustee Zelensky. No report this evening, Mayor. All right. Plan and zoning, uh, we already did that. Ready? And then, um, present, anybody have any presentations, petitions, or communications? I um, just wanted to 
I guess for myself, just to clarify, with the meeting minutes that are presented here, um, listed on item B under section three, I believe the um, attorney said that I could abstain from voting, right? Yeah, we're, I was just going to call for a, a roll call on that as well, too, on, on these committee meeting minutes. So, yeah, if, if you weren't here at that time, it would you could approve them, if you, but I don't know why you would. You yeah. weren't here to, to witness that and Cause, stuff. Yeah, because they're so, like, right. yeah, I wasn't here. And then they're, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you can, to clarify, you can vote in, even during the mass roll call, you can individually pick out items and say yes or no or abstain. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to mention to any of the department heads or the trustees for the agenda going into next week, if you would forward all your emails to Erica and myself as Tiffany will not be here. Okay. Um, any unfinished business? Any new business? I, before we go to the closed session, I need somebody to make a motion to approve the um, four meeting minutes uh, that the clerk presented. I'll make the motion. Second. So again, that is a motion to approve letters, uh, letter B, number one, two, three, and four. Yes. Mayor, what if we were to abstain from the top three and then you, yes you, to four because you, we were in attendance. You can do that during the vote. You can right. certainly say when, I want to abstain to those. Yeah. Okay. Just wasn't sure of the procedure. Yeah, you just right. say no, I abstain to one, okay. yes to two. Uh, okay. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLaughlin. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Uh, yes to one, two, three, um, excuse me, uh, abstain to one, two, and three, and yes to four. Thank you. Trustee Navis Barza. Uh, abstain uh, one, two, three. I was not a member of the board at that time. Um, and then number four, yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, we need to go to closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismiss, uh, dismissal of a specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against the an employee of the public body or legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 chapter 1. Can I get a motion and a second please? I'll make that motion. Second. And again this is a motion to adjourn to closed session, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Roll call number three to adjourn to closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of the specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2, Chapter 1. Again, roll call number three to adjourn to closed session. Trustee Dalzell. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Navis Barza. Yes. Motion carries to adjourn to closed session. Okay, so we're going to adjourn to closed session at 9.09 .09 p.m. And uh, we are going to come back in the boardroom shortly after for a um, special board meeting. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So I'd like to invite Shanae Hunter to join us in the uh, closed session. And um, we'll see everybody. Let's go across the hall, please, in, uh, in the other room for a moment then, okay? And uh, in the, the, the large conference room, please. Thank you.